Welcome back to Face the State on this Sunday morning. The race for the Connecticut General Assembly is making national headlines this year. That's because six openly gay candidates are running to be in the two chambers. And two of them are with us today. And they're all Republicans, by the way, these six that have been making national headlines. Mary Fay is from West Hartford. She's running for state representative. A.J. Kerouac is from Brooklyn in the northeast quiet corner and is also running for state representative. So, folks, thank you for being with us here today. You know, as you watch that flashback, what went through your mind, Mary? I think what I observed was how quickly things have changed. So to some, 1974 might have been an eternity ago, but in my life, it really wasn't that long ago. Uh, I was a young teen at the time, um, really not focused on the issue per se, but just how I've seen things, you know, towards acceptance rapidly advance in the past decade or so. And Mr. Kerouac, this is obviously ancient history to you as you watch that film, but what were you thinking as you watched it? Definitely, but important history. I mean, uh, what I was thinking as I was sitting there watching that was how, how, how much it must have taken for them to actually do that and to do that on camera at that time. Um, it, it's, it's amazing to me because it, things that like that that were people were brave enough to allow that to happen um, that allowed me when I came along to have it quite a bit easier um, you know and, and hopefully we can keep on doing that and you know, you're openly gay running for office um, talking about it now making national headlines could you have done it 20 years ago Mary you miss Faye uh, it would have been completely different and you probably wouldn't have even had a chance to really advance your race I think there would have been an automatic shun away from you know, choosing a candidate like ourselves. Uh, it's changed dramatically, and we do owe a lot of debt, uh, and we should be indebted to these folks who really did, um, you know, fight for rights and were early pioneers. You know, there are some who would say that the Democratic Party is probably more favorable to gay rights, yet you're both Republicans. Have you been a Republican your whole life? Yes, I have. And, and well, how do you dispute that potential stereotype that's the, out there? So the part that I never understand of it, uh, from, from that sort of, uh, I think it's a misconception, um, is that I meet many more diverse people as far as their backgrounds, uh, beliefs, and, and you know, their viewpoints even um, at Republican conventions, at gatherings, at this and that. Um, I think there's also that on both sides, um, but to say that one party uh, has, a, has a claim to any, any minority group or um, any, any, anything I think is, is a little place I don't want to go. <laughs> I'll let you weigh in. I know you had a thought on that. I did because I think I have a little bit of a different story than AJ. Uh, for most of my life I was a Democrat and worked for a lot of Democratic candidates and I just saw the party changing completely and the values became different than mine and uh, you know the, any party on the extreme end is really not where most of the people are. I think most people are in, in the middle. They're moderates. So, um, you know, I just don't think that either party represents everybody who's disenfranchised. I think both parties can, but I can say from personal experience, the Republican Party has been absolutely positively welcoming to me here in Connecticut, and we're very focused on the biggest issues of the state, which are, of course, fiscal. Now, in terms of the national party, is the inclusion, uh, the, the inclusionary feelings, are they replicated in the national party as well? I mean, Connecticut's a different type of state than, let's say, Texas. I feel that they are. I mean, that's one of the things to pick up on what Mary said there too. Is um, we are a little bit different here in Connecticut than you know the country as a whole. However, um, each piece we have little microcosms, um, and to feel the the support that I think that I've I've had personally um, has has been wonderful. Uh, there is that there is that line where I want to stop, you know, assuming that it's just this one this one factor, I don't think people are supporting me just because I'm a gay candidate. Um, I think it's also, like you said, the fiscal issues, um, the, the idea I, really to take back the taxation, and I think I can speak to that f from my point of view as a, a single gay man and trying to live in a very high tax state. Um, but I, I think it's more about those things that they really want to hear from us about. Is President Trump good for gay rights? Um, I, I, I haven't seen anything discriminatory come out of his administration and I'm very proud to live in Connecticut because I think we have taken strides to codify the law where gay rights are protected. Uh, but we can't give an inch on that. We can't give a centimeter. We can't budge whatsoever. It took us a long time to get to where we are. And I don't think uh, any backward step would be in anybody's best interest. Mr. Kerouac? I don't believe I don't I don't believe that he's any um, any, any doing any harm uh, as far as that front goes. Um, 
I think his actions and what he said in the past, uh, I get that he's under a very different type of microscope now, but looking at uh, the man as a whole, not just President Trump, um, I think it's safe to say that he's a supporter. I, 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 I've seen that from many of his actions and many of the initiatives he's sponsored in the past. Do you see yourselves as pioneers? You know, Dennis, when I think about this, I think of it similar to when I became a, a woman business leader at General Electric Corporation. I was in my 30s, and it seemed to be a big deal in the office that a woman was running a major business. And I couldn't understand why. At the end of the day, you want the most competent person in a leadership role. You want somebody who's deserved it and you know done the work to, to earn that position. And that's how I kind of view this as. It's one piece of who we are, but it's certainly not the whole picture. You know, I, for myself, I'm a mother. And um, you know, I, there's a lot of more, life is more complex than just one dimension. Have you had any inspiration or conversations with other gay lawmakers to help you guide this path? Yeah, I mean, there are some in the legislature right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, so so that they they've actually been very helpful. To, I've I reached out to even some some local um, other other local politicians that I know of, um, just to just ask them how they've navigated these waters. Um, so I, I I don't consider myself a pioneer as I'm reaching out to the people who I do view as pioneers, um, and any you know any support that they can give there is is great, and they've um, definitely helped me look at it as this is this is one facet. Um, you know, don't don't think that this is the the only focus. Uh, you know, there's also talking about the tax policy. There's also talking about everything else that's coming along in the next session. Um, but to for me personally, I, I do feel that um, not that this is the most important piece of m myself as a candidate. It's more about the honesty for me. Um, so I, I would never want to run for office and and hide a piece of myself because I would be in fear of votes or, or possibly you know, how it might impact my race. And that was, that was from the get-go, I, I was adamant that that was not going to happen. So we needed to find a way to delicately you know, come out yet again. <laughs> and Ms. Faye, have you talked to anyone who gave well, you inspiration? Yeah, and, and you know, mostly, mostly potential voters. So as I go around and door knock and, and whatnot, um, I think people are rooting for us because uh, they had a preconceived notion about what the Republican Party was or wasn't. And I think for us, you know, six of us now to be part of the party and, and be running in, you know, pretty major races is, is telling. And I think the second part is that when you talk to people, they're most focused on the economy and our fiscal policy. And honestly, to me, the economy is the great equalizer. If we can get the economy going, it benefits everybody in every, you know, color, shape, form, and economic stratosphere. Mary Faye of West Hartford, A.J. Kerouac of Kerouac. I pronounced that correctly, didn't yes. I? <laughs> it's been a difficult day for that. Uh, from Brooklyn, we thank you so much for being in the program today. Thanks, and thank you so much for watching Face the State. We'll see you Wednesday night for the big gubernatorial debate, 7 o'clock right here on Channel 3. Have a great Sunday, everybody.